Oh, hey guys, what's up? I'm here with a review of a recently released, uh, I think it was, I think it had its premiere last year, released uh, about, I think, March of this year. A new German horror film I've been hearing some buzz about, uh, especially from those who are more into kind of extreme and disturbing cinema. Uh, I am, of course, talking about The Golden Glove. Uh, this was a movie I really didn't hear anything about when it was released, you know. It didn't get a lot of hype behind it, uh, at least not until I recently, you know, saw something about it. But um, it looked interesting anyway, and I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll check that out when I get the chance. Uh, and then I subscribed to, then I fucking did the, the, the week-long trial of Shudder. And I was like, I was like, all right, well, I guess I can watch the Golden Glove now. So, I watched the Golden Glove. So, the Golden Glove is uh, a German film based on a novel, which is about an actual serial killer uh, named Fritz Hunka. Uh, Fritz was active in the 1970s, and he mainly picked up a lot of victims, you know, women from the local bar in the red light district the golden glove which uh from what i've heard is actually still open to this day so you can go there and fucking see the place where mr honka picked up women i guess fuck it um and you know we've seen a million of these like oh look how you know depraved uh you know, the, you know, this person is, look how, you know, bad that person is, uh, kind of serial killer movies. You know, some of the best ones of this type are movies like William Lustig's Maniac, um, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, Angst, uh, even the remake of Maniac to an extent, uh, although that one's definitely still very exploitive. Um, this film is inarguably exploitive too, but... The films didn't try to necessarily sympathize with the killers. They, well, okay, you know what? That's that's actually a lie because one of them, one of those three I just named does, but eh, it's still minor. It didn't. The film didn't try to necessarily make these killers, these horrible human beings, into uh, you know like sympath one hundred percent sympathetic characters. They tried to keep them as inhuman, yet obviously very real as possible. And the same thing can be said about the Golden Glove. Uh, because while there's, you know, a bunch of movies based on real serial killers, um, there's only a handful of them, you know. There's, there's tons of horror films based on actual murders and stuff. And while I do think it's in poor taste to do that at all, it's not going to stop anybody, so I tend to give them a watch anyway. And there are some out there that are genuinely really good horror films, really good movies in general, that are based on uh, actual murders. Of course, there are tons and tons and tons of them that uh, are not good and are also not very, uh, you know respectful um i guess ba making a film based on murders anyways and respectful but still there's there's ways to go about this the golden glove is one of the best ones i've seen i would probably say up there with angst and henry portrait of a serial killer those two films being about real serial killers um you know those both of those films as well as this one are very nasty and cruel and misogynistic and vile and disturbing and disgusting. Yet simultaneously, um, you could say that compared to their contemporaries, like even Maniac, uh, one that I, I I believe is almost as good as those ones, but that one isn't based on a real serial killer. Movies like Maniac, um, for example, y you can look at those and or how about another recent one uh this one isn't um a real serial killer film but it's about a serial killer unless the house that jack built from uh, a couple years ago lars von trier's recent horror film you can look at those and you look at films like angst henry portrait of a serial killer and tonight's movie the golden glove you look at them and you can tell that there is at least some level of like subtlety some level 
of respect, uh, some level of, I guess you could say, restraint to the violence that's shown. Don't get me wrong, I'm not sitting here saying that that fucking Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer is fun for the whole family. It is not. It is really disturbing. But, like, and there's 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 some graphic violence there, but it's not necessarily that gory or, you know, really out there. Um, the same could be said about uh, Angst. Actually, even more could be said about Angst, because Angst is, from what I remember, there isn't too, too much blood on screen uh, in the film, and it's 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 mainly just kind of a, a less is more situation, and the same kind of thing goes for the Golden Glove. Although, you know, like this guy, he does chop up his victims, but you don't see that necessarily on screen. And if it happens, uh, you know, it, it's off screen. You hear it, and it's not pleasant. It's really stomach churning, but it's it's not there. It could be there. You know, they could go, you know, f you know, full fucking. Uh, the house that Jack built with it and be as exploitive and needless as possible while also having their head shoved up their ass. Um, side rant, this movie is what the f is what fucking the house that Jack built should have been. Uh, quick opinion on that movie. The house that Jack built is an absolute garbage fucking movie made by an edgy piece of shit who believes that the Me Too movement is rhetoric created by feminists to just kind of get rid of all men in general. Um, and he basically made this movie as, as a means of saying that the Me Too movement is inherently uh, bad, um, which is something I majorly disagree with, uh, so while also, you know, making a film that is art and it has deep symbolism and literally in and of itself calls itself art many many times and it's not subtle it's not creative like yeah it's nasty it's disturbing it's misogynistic there's even a bit of a sense of humor to it there's a handful of scenes in that movie i genuinely like however the house that jack built just wants to be a complex art film about a disturbing subject, yet it wants to go all the way with the fucking violence, which completely disconnects it, you know? Like, at least, like, as much as I, 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 I respect movies like Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, Angst, um, Maniac, and, again, The Golden Glove, uh, I personally... I, I look at those movies and I can tell, like, they didn't make this with any kind of pretension to be like, oh, yeah, we're doing this, this is art. They made this because they wanted to tell an interesting story, they wanted to make some money, um, they wanted to do something. Now, I got that out of the way. The Golden Glove, um, this is, I haven't even reviewed it, I got eight minutes recorded. So the Golden Glove, uh, yeah. It's essentially, it just follows Fritz as he goes about his day. Um, he, you know, loses his job, gets another job. He's an alcoholic, um, spends all of his time at the bar drinking his life away with other people um, who have interesting nicknames like Ginny Joe. Um, and I think like, uh, <laughs> um, was it Elijah the Nose or something like that? Ulrich the Nose, maybe? Uh, and another guy... Uh, whose nickname is Anus for some reason, just hangs out with these kind of colorful yet very depressing characters and um, drinks his life away, essentially. Simultaneously, you have his home life, where it's him living alone, picking up women who are at that bar, you know, kind of very, very desperate, depressed, uh, and lures them into his home with promises of, of alcohol. And he then, you know, often has sex with them, and then murders and dismembers them. Uh, Jesus Christ is uh, this movie uh, very disturbing. I, I think I've said that already, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, holy hell, uh, this is one of the grimiest movies I've seen in a very long time. Like, I'm happy that this film did not come with fucking smell vision because if there was a fucking, like, smell vision scratch and sniff card to go along with it, it would just be nothing but, like, you know, piss, shit, 
and just kind of moldy housing, mountain like moldy cheap housing, um, and decaying bodies. Like this film, you can smell it just by looking at it. It's that filthy. Everything just fits this era of depression and you know the griminess of the neighborhood that the bar was in. It, it, it's it's honestly it looks greasy and dirty and gross as hell and that's something that I really really like about the film is that it just straight up fucking goes there with its visual aesthetics it doesn't try to look like this clean pristine perfect movie um instead it goes for this really really again I'm gonna say it gross visual aesthetic and uh, I, I really really respect that the acting is really great all around, uh, specifically from the lead, uh, whose name I cannot remember off the top of my head, but he is absolutely fucking amazing as Fritz. Um, he really sells it, you know, uh, like genuinely sells this character as a piece of shit, and the, the performance itself is extremely brave, in my opinion, because he is walking around, you know, covered in filth in a dirty white beater, like fucking dick hanging out, you know, try, like fucking grabbing hot dogs out of the fridge to shove up a girl's ass. Like it's a what the what the fuck? This is bad. Um, but Jesus, does this guy fucking sell it? Like it is on par with with fucking Joe Spinell and Maniac. And uh, yeah, fucking Christ, is his performance great? It's an extremely intense performance too. A lot of yelling, a lot of throwing women around. It's Ooh, it's 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 not a, it's not it's not a fun movie, kids. Not a fun movie at all. Um, you know, in terms of writing, I think the film could have been and, and, and pacing. I think the film could have been a little shorter. They could have cut out a few things here or there. Not that I think that that like weighs this film down um, at all, because this film is genuinely pretty good uh, all around. It's just about something that is not pleasant at all. And uh, honestly, as creepy and great uh, as this performance from the lead is, I really don't want to have to watch Fritz stare at women in prolonged shots in public. It makes me feel very, very uncomfortable. I know that's the point, but, you know, I, I kind of didn't want to feel that while watching this. Although, if I'm going to watch a movie that's disturbing, it may as well just fucking make me feel all kinds of bad. Um... Honestly, this is the kind of movie you want to watch if, like, you want to wake up the next morning and feel like shit and feel physically drained, like you just spent the whole last evening drinking and you wake up in your own filth. This film is that without the pain of having to deal with the hangover in the morning. And I gotta really applaud it for that. But I also have to kind of, you know you know j just say something about the film and that it is very un it's very very disturbing very uncomfortable it's not for everybody it's in german it's like two hours long these are things that are going to turn people off immediately and i just need to get to say that um because i don't want anybody wasting their time with a movie that they are going to be upset about watching uh, if you're looking for a disturbing film if you're looking for something that's really really horrific this is definitely a gem uh, of you know the recent stuff we've had in the past few years and uh, yeah I I would say that I don't think I would say I like this movie but I genuinely think it's really interesting uh, very engaging and uh, I do not regret spending my time to watch it uh, at all um, that being said, this is not a fun experience, uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, I guess I did this to myself by watching a disturbing movie, but I kind of want to just take away a couple, couple points just because, like, I now feel like shit after watching this movie, and, uh, you know, I was just looking for something interesting and kind of fucked up, not, not to feel like I've... I just woke up with a hangover. So, uh, as a result, the Golden Glove is going to get like a 3.5 out of 5 for me. Like a 7 out of 10. Really good, really good quality stuff. And I'm interested in seeing what this filmmaker, what else this filmmaker has done and what else, and what he does next. Um, from what I've seen, not, like this is his first uh, genre film in terms of horror. So, you know, um, 
it'll probably take me a while to get around to it. But, you know, I, I, I might get around to it. it. He definitely, I mean, the director definitely has some fucking skill going on. Um, also, during the end credits of the film, they show pictures of Fritz, of the real Fritz, uh, his victims, uh, pictures of his apartment, and diagram, in a diagram of his apartment, and let me tell you, they got this set perfect for this film, so that's another thing I have to applaud, is the set design. Either way, I'm fucking rambling now. Uh, that's it for this one, guys. This is Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.